Oh, would you look at that? It's tabletop time. <laughs> so I was considering holding back on putting any content on it, out on this channel until I was ready to just hit the ground running with really high quality uh, storytelling cogent stuff and then start implementing mini stuff along the way. But just yesterday, this channel ticked over 40,000 subscribers. And I, uh, it would be a missed opportunity if I didn't talk about miniatures because 40K, I mean, come on. <laughs> I think also it'll be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about why I love mini painting and what I think that content might look like here, but also ask you what you might like to see. Now I'm gonna disclaim that any and all mini content, at least for the earlier part of uh, how I involve it on Tabletop Time will be fairly supplementary and also based on what I'm doing in my personal time. As a result, that means that I won't be doing a lot of filming in studio, except for occasional talk to camera stuff like this. But a lot of the projects I'll be showing will actually be photos that I'll take along the way as I make uh, mini project stuff in my personal time. And occasionally I'll probably sneak in some filming. But that is because uh, mini painting and the 40K minis in particular to me are really a rediscovery of hobbying. I have not really done a lot of art in my personal time, especially since I've become a full-time YouTube artist. The idea of doing art for the sake of it, for fun, isn't something that appeals to me. I actually find a lot of fun making content and making the channel, but in my spare time, I've, I've uh, preferred not to do that because it doesn't particularly feel like unwinding. However, this last year in 2020, I have really re-immersed myself into mini painting, which I haven't done since I was in my late teens. So I want to talk about what I want to do on this channel with my hobby, but I want to start off by talking about the hobby itself as an acknowledgement of the landmark that Tabletop Time ticked over, which is amazing by the way, thank you for subscribing. I think passing the 40k milestone is a great excuse for a little bit of self-indulgence, especially because that's the whole point of me doing minis on this channel, to treat myself. Hopefully you guys enjoy the journey along the way. I discovered Warhammer 40k because my cousins collected Warhammer. And they played these games and it seemed really cool and they encouraged me to, to try it and get into it myself and I did. I got a bunch of different Space Marines and I picked Blood Angels because red was my favorite color and it seemed really cool and I did not regret that choice because they had super cool lore and really cool characters. One of my fondest memories of being creative as a teenager was on a family holiday interstate. It was like a gorgeous summer sunny holiday thing. You know, one of the places you go to the beach and all this stuff and I just sat on the balcony painting Warhammer and it was my birthday. On that holiday and for my birthday all I wanted was a set of Terminators and I begged my parents to, to drive to the nearest games workshop which was a two-hour drive away from our holiday destination I got my Terminators and I spent the whole holiday painting Terminators I love that I love those memories and I love that in rediscovering this as an adult there's sort of a recapturing of that feeling which is really fun so I got pretty heavily into Warhammer but mainly the painting so basically how I played Warhammer is oh, I would turn to my cousins and say, what do I have to roll? And they'd tell me and I'd roll and hope it was good. But that was it. I didn't know really how the rules work. But the more I got into it and I got pretty into it, I think I collected a like a thousand point Blood Angels army. I started to want to collect models that I didn't have, a, didn't want to play, didn't want to have an army of just because the models were cool. And by the time I was in my late teens and really not playing or seeing my cousins very often, a lot of the fun I had in the hobby was saving up and buying a special model like a Chaos Demon Prince and making a diorama or making a really cool scene. And I, I, it breaks my heart that I lost my collection of Warhammer and all my miniatures, which, and I've said this multiple times on the main channel, is uh, a sacrifice I made when I was trying to break through on YouTube earlier and I was broke and I needed the money and I got 500 bucks for my entire Warhammer collection on eBay and I it's probably one of the things I regret most is selling my collection and I wish I could track it down and buy it but unfortunately that is all in the past and I left it behind and this year is when I rediscovered it but I think it's pretty clear for anyone who's watched any of my other channels content for any amount of time that Warhammer and 40k and my love of that my nostalgia for that has always creeped in from doing the 40k artwork when I passed 40k on my now 5 million subscriber channel or the fact that my mural for like three or four years had a big blood angel space marine in the mural and then to more recently the fact that I again painted another blood angel and another mural on my door because I missed having that here and one of my favorite projects from the main channel was where I re-sculpted 
uh, a Blood Angel Space Marine in virtual reality and 3D printed it with a filament printer and painted it. Just a really fun project, something I walk in the room and see in the corner and I'm just really proud of and love. And I reprinted with my brand new resin printer at a really high resolution and I look forward to making that a project on this channel very soon. But that's the, the rough background. I had the hobby, I let go of the hobby to make my business work and now that my business works and I'm very fortunate enough to be in a position where I could take the hobby back on again and get everything I could possibly want to explore that hobby to my heart's content. Let me talk about where my goals and hopes and dreams as far as mini painting as a hobby are now and what things I have to play with. Now I did do a video on my ch main channel basically shamelessly delving into the uh, creators and artists that I have followed and ha many of which have become friends now which is amazing to me. And in that I basically drooled over a lot of people's talent and techniques and, and that is one of the things that inspires me most about mini painting getting back into it. It's another level, like it never existed in the form that it does now when I was into mini painting back in the day. I mean, it's evolved to a point where it's so extreme and so professional and so incredible and inspiring, but also potentially intimidating. Now, fortunately, I'm someone who actually really doesn't care about that sort of thing. You can tell me what sucks or is great about my work. I am always really exactly where I feel about my work for the most part. So I'm really hoping that this channel and any mini content I make here is going to be something that feels encouraging and welcoming and fun to those of you who are discovering the hobby for the first time or wanting to get back into it. I think to be frank, any mini content I make on this channel is going to be tonally very similar to my art content on my Jazza channel where it's really about trying it having a go sometimes the results will be great sometimes not so great but at the end of the day it's about having fun and, and exploring creativity so one of the first things I did when I got back into the hobby was bought myself the thing every mini painter needs a pile of shame I watched a lot of mini painting content and realized a lot of people had just a lot of models that they would never get around to painting so I thought it'd be a great idea to just get a bunch of those. In all seriousness, I, uh, I, I love converting and mixing and matching parts. So I will buy just like random mixes and matches of like different sets of bases, of models, of factions from different games, simply because I may want these parts or that part to go with something I build and I might come years later, I might want like the spanner on this dude or the chest of gold. Because that is where I get a lot of my fun, I actually did want to just get a collection of stuff to use as bits. I went and purchased just bags of bits from eBay. <laughs> Using websites like Puppets War and just buying loads of bits, having all the bits, I just want all the bits, will just give me the ability to really experiment and kit bash, which is my favorite thing. Converting and kit bashing and storytelling through the miniatures, creating something really unique and really new, that's my favorite thing to do. Some of you who watch my main channel will have seen I did a video creating this miniature, uh, which I call Knife Fight, which is an orc slaughtering a civilian. And this is an example of one of those minis that I put a lot of time and effort into the sculpting and the customizing of the different figures, took bits and pieces from different parts and places and started off really small. I just wanted to create something approachable and I'm going to work my way up from here. But this idea of capturing a moment in motion of repositioning, of redepicting the miniatures and, and the aesthetic, but in a way that doesn't exist in a box, that's something I find really satisfying and want to challenge myself more and more over time. In fact, I'm actually currently working on something. This is for a collab. I'm not going to give away too much. For a collab on my main channel with two very cool miniature painting channels but I'm reposing Abaddon the Despoiler in a scene where he's about to slaughter someone so I, I genuinely find first of all violence apparently <laughs> but the challenge of turning some of these hard to pose, hard to make organic models into figures that are in motion, that are in a moment and telling a story and also really unique in something that doesn't exist elsewhere. I think also the interaction between two figures I find really interesting too, because normally they're just like one figure on a base, but I love the challenge of having them interact in a way that is really cool. And I find people who do that sort of thing really inspiring. So that's the sort of thing I love to do in my own personal time, which hopefully I'll be able to share with you on this channel. Another thing that I'm working on is my own space marine faction and i thought i would resist doing the whole oh collect an army but um yeah no i can't i can't i can't resist it but i can't do blood angels again because i don't like repeating myself and especially because i feel like i've 
done Blood Angels, and knowing that my favourite thing about miniatures is the conversion, the kit bashing, and the sculpting, I want to create a really unique and custom faction of 40k Space Marines. And I'm doing it as a subset of the Space Wolves, and I've already been helpfully corrected by some of you saying that there is no uh, offspring faction of the of the Space Wolves. Apparently that's not true. Is it the Wolf Brothers? I googled it. The Wolf Brothers. The Wolf Brothers was an early faction and it didn't go well apparently, but hey, maybe the Space Bears, which is the faction I'm creating, will be uh, from the Space, from the Wolf Brothers. I don't know. <laughs> the point is it's a bear aesthetic and I'm gonna tie the lore into Space Wolf, so stuff ya. You're not in charge of me, this is my channel. Don't mean to get aggressive there, I apologize. So, I'm gonna save diving into that for some future videos, but there will be videos. I'm still developing the Space Bears, particularly at the moment, the color scheme, but I'm, I'm close to finished. And I think I've nailed uh, the aesthetic and the design, which I'm really excited about, and I'll go into detail into that later. But it involves a lot of sculpting, a lot of mixing bits that you can purchase from other various places. Even, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like buying like the old Warhammer heads because the helmets are slightly bulkier and thicker and custom sculpting like the nose nozzle thing to look a little more bearish. Like I'm really enjoying fine tuning the aesthetic to make a really unique army. And I'm looking forward to sharing the process, but also involving you guys. Part of the fun of doing the whole Space Bears thing is that for me, it's gonna be really dumb and hammy and also really epic and cool. So on the one hand, they are the Astra Primersa. That's their official name. And they're gonna have like really cool lore and really cool stories and characters. And it's going to be filled to the brim with bear puns. For example, uh, the librarian will be Yogindar Captiosis. He might be called Yogi for short. Um, and, and the rest of his name means intelligent. So in Latin, so he's smarter than the average bear. The bikes are gonna be called the uh, Primersa Outrider Operators and Winston is going to be the captain of them. Primaris Outrider Operator is Pooh. So I guess you could say he's Winnie the Pooh Bear. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot more of these. I've spent days writing bear puns. Please let me know in the comments some great bear puns and character names because this can be a community effort. But it's really important that on the surface level it's being taken very seriously. You just have to dig to get to the gold. <laughs> I think that encapsulates where I am with the hobby. It's cool and epic and I'm just having fun. The other thing I've, I've discovered and I'm really excited about are the uh, the display minis and the, the dioramas and the, um, the busts and uh, all that sort of thing. So I've got a whole bunch of different things from different companies. I've bought all of this, by the way, like out of my own pocket. And if you back me on Patreon, you have my eternal gratitude, but also please know that all of my own personal money will always get this Warhammer stuff. Any of your Patreon contributions just goes to making the content more regular and viable because then I can pay editors and actually try and turn it into something more of a business. And the more support I get on Patreon and the more views I get on YouTube, the more I can justify putting more into tabletop time separate to my hobby time. So please do consider becoming a Patreon because that would mean a lot to me. Uh, but also know that it goes exactly where it's needed for you to get uh, your, your money's worth, so to speak. Because I would have gotten all this stuff for myself anyway Way, but the more you want me to share it with you, that's where Patreon can tell me uh, that you want more. And that would be something I'd be incredibly grateful for. So I'll link to that in the description. And last but not least, there's the stuff I want to learn. There's a lot of stuff I want to learn. Techniques like non-metallic metal and object source lighting that, you know, they'll, they'll, it'll take a lot of trial and error and I may not be able to get to it all as soon as I'd like. But I have absolutely pigged out on all of the coolest stuff and just for myself. I got this stuff before I realized I was gonna bring back tabletop time. All these sorts of molds and resins and rollers and plinths and waxes and putties. Painting sets for non-metallic metal and black and white painting. Oil paints, pigments and alcohol based and true metallics and rubber shapers and epoxies and terrain stuff. Chains and cogs and... Oh and a big old resin 3D printer. So there's a lot I have to dive into that I'm not gonna be able to get to all of it even in the next year, but I'm so excited that I just have it all ready to go and I can just try whatever my heart desires next and share the process with you. And that's what this is all about. I think the heart of tabletop time will always be uh, tabletop role playing, which it always has been and will 
be uh, the, the core part of it moving forward. But I'm hoping that by adding miniature content, those of you who play tabletop role-playing games but like to add minis into the mix, like in D&D or Pathfinder, hopefully there's some stuff you find interesting. And then those of you who came here for the minis content, I'm really hoping you enjoy the tabletop role-playing and stories that we create. Also, I think it goes pretty well hand-in-hand -hand with the mini painting itself. I know that the time I listen to most long-form content is when I'm mini painting. And I'm hoping that our stories are something really fun and enjoyable that you can enjoy while you do your mini painting. I can't wait for the fun we're gonna get up to over time. It's gonna be a little bit of a slow start just as I get all the tech set up, but as you can see, I'm struggling to hold myself back from making content on here anyway. So thank you for tuning in on the journey. Thank you for 40,000 subscribers. If you're new to tabletop time and you're looking forward to joining the journey or exploring the hobby, consider subscribing. And if you love the content and you want more of it, please consider backing me on Patreon. I would be incredibly grateful and it will absolutely go to making more content and making it more sustainable. Otherwise, that'll do it for this video. The Emperor Protects. And until next time, I'll see you later. Was it dumb adding the Emperor Protects thing? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs>